Hi, welcome back or welcome in if you're new here. My name is Emily Bryant. I'm a World Latte Art Champion and I teach latte art all around the country to many, many people. And now you, because you clicked on this video. So if you can like and subscribe below, that really helps me out. Okay, we have a really fun one today. I'm very excited. It's gonna be how to steam milk or rather how not to steam milk. We're gonna go over 10 of the most common mistakes that I see baby baristas and sometimes even veteran baristas make when they're steaming their milk. So if you're doing any of these, ugh, stop. But if you are doing a couple of these, that's okay. If you're doing all of these, ugh, I really hope you're not doing all of these. That's okay too though, because we're gonna go through them one by one by one and we're gonna show you how to correct each one so that by the end of the video, you won't do these things anymore. Uh, so let's go. There's an ice cream truck outside. It's 9 p.m. It's too late for ice cream. However, I, I drink coffee really late, so I guess I shouldn't judge other people's consumptions of goods. Moving on. Okay, number one. This is a big one. Steam wand location. That's this thing right here. Steam wand. It should be on your machine. If you don't have a steam wand on your machine, you can always froth with other methods, but I'm gonna link a really great stovetop steamer down below in the description. So it's one of the most common mistakes I see people make, but they will walk up to the steam wand with their pitcher and they will put the steam wand directly in the center of the pitcher, like that. That is exactly the opposite of what you actually wanna do. You wanna put your steam wand towards one side or the other. You wanna be biased towards one of these sides. It doesn't matter which one, you pick whichever one. I'm not gonna tell you how to live your life. You like counterclockwise, great. You like clockwise, great. So the reason we do this is because we wanna create a vortex or a whirlpool if you like that terminology more. We want that milk to be swirling in a circular motion. The reason we create a vortex is because when we're injecting air into the milk, all that air is gonna float up to the top of the milk. But if it floats up to the top of the milk, then it's it's gonna separate from the liquid underneath. And we're not gonna get that beautiful, rich, creamy mouthfeel that we want. And we're especially not gonna get good texture for latte art. But when we create a whirlpool, we are distributing those bubbles deeper into the pitcher. And they're also breaking bigger bubbles down into smaller bubbles, which is gonna allow us to get that silky, delicious, velvety texture that we love so much. Moving on, number two, not adding enough air to your milk when you're steaming. This one's extremely common. You can actually hear it the next time you go to a cafe, so listen up closely. Whenever the barista is adding air to the milk, if they don't add any air, it's gonna make this sound. Guys! So how do we correct that? So at the very beginning, there's a phase called stretching, and this is exactly how it sounds. We are stretching the milk by adding air to it. It's creating more volume in the pitcher. So it usually goes like this. You walk up to the steam wand, you have your pitcher, it's got milk in it. You take the steam wand, you put it to your bias, and then you submerge the tip of the steam wand, that's the part with the little holes in it. You submerge that underneath the milk, and then you turn on the machine. Then you're gonna wanna pull down on your pitcher very gently until you hear what sounds like ripping paper, not tearing paper but ripping paper. And that's how we add air to our milk. So whenever you wanna stop the stretching phase, we do this little motion, it's really beautiful, we just move up. And that submerges the tip back underneath the milk and so we're no longer injecting air into the milk. We'll talk about milk injection a little bit later because that's actually another tip uh, coming up, so no spoilers. Number three, which is actually really similar to number two, which is adding too much air instead of no air. If you don't add enough air, you're not gonna be able to get any milk foam on top of the espresso. If you add way too much air, it's gonna pour out in blobs of foam and it's not gonna be very pretty. I like to say in latte art, less is more. So you might be thinking, well, how do I know if my milk has too much foam? Well, there's actually a test you can do. Whenever you're done steaming your milk, tap it on a surface. If it has no air, it's gonna sound sharp and it's just gonna sound like metal hitting the surface. If it has way too much air, it's gonna sound hollow, like you're flicking sourdough bread. You ever flicked sourdough bread? It sounds great. It's like boop, boop, boop. We wanna live somewhere in the middle, the Goldilocks zone, where it sounds a little hollow, but also still sounds like there's some liquid in there and like you're not just tapping out a big air bubble. Number four. That's actually eight. Number four, adding all the air at once. And what you're doing in this moment is you are integrating air into your milk and that's great. And you're also doing it in a timely manner. That's also good. But the problem is you're not getting delicate, tiny bubbles. You're getting giant bubbles and small bubbles all dispersed in there. 
and it's gonna be really hard to groom that milk into velvety textured milk. Whenever you pour with it, you'll probably see visible bubbles still on the surface. So the key to fix this is to add multiple injections of air into your milk very gently. Gently being the key word. You don't wanna throw air into your milk. You're not gonna have any control over the bubble size if you do that. And what we ideally want is we want small bubbles to be broken down even smaller into microfoam. That is the perfect thing to pour with and it tastes delicious and it feels very beautiful on your tongue. Well, how do I know when I've added enough air? Well, there's a couple ways to tell. It's how much volume in the pitcher have you taken up? Once you add air to the milk, it's going to rise in the pitcher. So if you have a designated volume that you're familiarized with, that you've poured with before, you wanna replicate that every single time. As soon as you see it hit that volume, stop adding air. Another factor would be what kind of drink do you wanna make? Do you wanna make a traditional cappuccino that has really large bubbles and lots of foam? then by all means, throw a bunch of air in there in the beginning. I know I would do that in that case. Think of it like this. The entire time that we're spinning that milk in that pitcher, we're breaking bubbles down. But if we add really big bubbles in the beginning, it's gonna take longer to break those bubbles down. And we may not accomplish that in the time it takes to steam the milk before it's too hot to continue vortexing. Vortexing, is that a word? Anyway, I like to think of the injections as chirps. Uh, because I find them to have this little slightly high-pitched sound, but it also still sounds like someone ripping paper very gently. It's not like tearing paper aggressively. It's, it's very light. It's tss, 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 tss. I'll play the sound for you right here. So remember, listen for the chirps with the multiple spurts. I love a good rhyme. Number five, I call this duck bobbing because when people do it, it reminds me of the way that ducks and birds walk. But it's whenever you go up to the steam wand and you have the steam wand in the pitcher and when you turn it on, you pull the pitcher up and down to inject your spurts of air. So this goes back to number four with the delicate injections of air. If you're bobbing up and down, you're not controlling the size of the bubbles you're putting into your milk and there may not be no coming back from that. How to fix that? Stop doing it. Moving on, dude, this is, this is it. This is the number one issue that I see people make when I'm training them. I see it from new baristas, veteran baristas. I even see it from competitors sometimes. And that is letting your milk sit out too long. So we have worked so hard to get our silky smooth milk. We created a vortex, we've added air to it and you take it off the steam wand. And what I see all the time is people will just put their pitcher down and let it sit. But when you do that, what's gonna happen is that milk foam is going to separate from the liquid underneath. It's gonna rise up in your pitcher and then it's not gonna be workable. We won't be able to do anything with that foam. What you wanna do is as soon as your milk is off that steam wand, we have to recreate that vortex, but manually. You're gonna wanna spin the milk against the walls of your pitcher. Don't stop spinning it. I mean, don't stop spinning it until you are ready to pour. If you spin it too lightly, all you're doing is, is moving the foam that's on top in a little circle. But if you spin it with enough force, you're redistributing that foam throughout the pitcher. Usually I'll take my milk and I'll take my cup and I'll swirl my espresso and I'll keep my milk swirling until I'm just about ready to pour. That is the moment you wanna stop swirling. Number seven, grooming. That's right, you heard it right. What is grooming? Grooming is essentially what we did in number six. It's stirring the milk and it's tapping out any bubbles. It means we are cleaning up our milk. I see this all the time. Aristas will, they'll finish steaming their milk. And let's say it's not like number six. You don't need any time to set the pitcher down. You're ready to go, you're ready to pour. But they won't tap out the bubbles and they won't swirl the milk around in the pitcher. And what this does is, well, when you pour, those bubbles are going to destroy parts of your design. And if you spin the milk before you pour with it, you'll get a beautiful shiny sheen. Shiny sheen? It's gonna add that shine to your pour. It's also gonna redistribute those bubbles like in number six. Just take a second and tap out any big bubbles you might see on top and swirl your milk a little. It'll make a world's difference, I promise. Moving on, steaming your milk too hot. If you like your milk extra, extra hot, I'm not gonna judge you, I promise. I don't think there's anything wrong with liking extra hot milk, but I will say, if you're trying to make beautiful latte art by using extra hot milk, that's anything over 160 degrees Fahrenheit, as you go hotter and hotter with your milk, at a certain point, you are breaking down the chains and structures that are holding your milk together and your milk will fall apart and you will not be able to pour with it. And it also stopped tasting as good. It's gonna taste very bland and you might even get a little bit of a burnt flavor 
in your drink. The ideal temperature for milk, in my opinion, and in Fahrenheit, is between 130 and 150. Anything beyond that, you're starting to push to the limits, so try to avoid that. I've had people come into my cafe and ask for boiling milk before from the steam wand so that I would have to steam it and it would boil over onto my hands, which is absurd, but you know, service industry. Easy way to correct this is putting a thermometer in your pitcher and monitoring how hot your milk gets. Or you can do the hand test as you're holding the pitcher. As soon as the pitcher is too hot to touch for more than a second, take it off the heat. It's good to go. Over filling your pitchers. I know you do this. People do this all the time. When you overfill your pitcher, the problem is that milk in that pitcher is going to expand when you add air to it. And if you add too much air or if you have too much milk, then it's going to circulate and fall right over the edge of your pitcher and make a big mess all over your bar. Easy way to fix that is to portion less milk. If you portion too little milk, add a little more next time. Dependent on the size of the pitcher, it's gonna be a different amount of milk each time. Some pitchers are more wide, some pitchers are more, are more tight together, so their volume is higher in the pitcher, and some pitchers are bigger and some pitchers are smaller. So you wanna add your milk according to the size drink you want. Usually the right amount of milk is just beneath the spout of the pitcher. Dependent on the drink, and this isn't always true, but this is, this is where we start whenever we add milk. Or if you're really cool, you can weigh your milk and you can weigh it the same every time until you see exactly how much is the right amount for you. All right, y'all, we made it. It's number 10. This is the final one. This is a little one, but it's also, I see it all the time and it's, Something I'm a little more empathetic to because I've definitely made this mistake a few times. That's not purging the steam wand before you steam your milk. This one's so easy to correct. And I encourage you to form a habit of purging your steam wand before and after you've steamed your milk. We purge our steam wand after as well because sometimes milk will get sucked back up into the steam wand. And if you just leave it in there, it's going to be really nasty and it's gonna get hot and it's gonna it's gonna cake up your steam wand and probably clog it as well. So not good. Guys, that is it. We are done. We made it through. I wanna thank you guys again for sticking through another video with me. This one was really fun. If you made it this far, I, I love you to death. Thank you so much for supporting me. And stay tuned for next week because we're gonna go over how to steam milk from beginning to end consistently on any machine you might want. Don't forget to subscribe, like, follow, all that stuff and send it to 10 of your friends and family. If this if this video helped you, please comment below. Let me know. I love hearing back from you guys. If you have any questions, I also, I respond. I read all the comments. So you just let me know down below. And as always, thank you and good night.